Good morning and welcome to the Bowling University studios from the International Bowling Campus in Arlington, Texas. I'm Gerald Morrow and I'll be your host for this edition of the Bowling University Tuesday Morning Profit Break. Thank you for joining us. The Tuesday Morning Profit Break is an opportunity for sharing insights on how to grow revenue, reduce cost, and enrich yourself, your team, and your business. Welcome to our new viewers and welcome back to those of you joining us again. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day. We have another great show ready to share with you, so grab your coffee or your favorite morning beverage and let's get started improving your profitability. Today, we'll be finishing up the three-part series on talent acquisition. Bart Berger is joining us again to discuss the topic of training and retaining your staff. Bart, thanks so much for joining us for this third and final edition on this whole talent acquisition series. So what's the final piece to this talent puzzle? Well, Gerald, uh, thanks for having me. Good morning, everybody. So the final piece, folks, that we're going to put together after you went through the steps is that now that we've made the choice, we need to train and ultimately retain so we don't have to have that revolving door. We want to make the right selection, which you've already done, and now we're going to bring them on board, on board them, we're going to train them and retain them there. So just as a reminder, this is the, uh, our pyramid that we do when we talk about uh, talent acquisition, how are we going to find uh, great team members? We're going to act. We're going to take a proactive stance. We're going to think like marketers. First and foremost, we have to attract a pool of people to talk to. If we don't have anyone to talk to, it doesn't matter how great our selection process is, right? So we've got to start the foundation with getting people to uh, be the employer choice, getting people to choose from. We talked about that in our first episode. Then in our second episode, we talked about our selection process. How do we choose the right candidate, the right team member, the right future leader for our organization from, from the people that we have to choose from. And we talked about multiple type of uh, I interview styles and encouraged you to think about uh, you know, those, those multiple interviews with multiple people from your team or really maybe give that, that group interview a try there. And now that brings us to the last piece of the pyramid and that is that train and retain. Now that we've made the selection, how do we keep them as part of the family, as part of the, the team long term and ultimately retain them? So my question to you, and it's kind of a rhetorical question, of course, this morning, is what does your onboarding program look like? If I was fortunate enough to be selected and be a member of your team, what would that look like? What would happen? What would happen in the first few hours? What would happen in the first day? What would happen in the first couple of days? And I'd encourage you to think about that for a moment because um, for many of us, we struggle in this area. We're so busy, we have so many things going on, we don't have large staff, so we don't have a lot of support because we're small in independent operators. What does that look like? You know, there are great examples out there that, that do it well, and, and the one that I love is Texas Roadhouse. Imagine having our team running around with a t-shirt that on the back has said, I heart my job, I love my job. And you wanna be that employer of choice, like, like a Texas Roadhouse, like a Chick-fil-A. So let's talk about what that, uh, what that looks like there. Remind you the quote from Peter Drucker that I love, good employees quit when management is bad, bad employees quit when management is good. And I want to share with you a study that is, uh, I found it eye-opening, and, and I want to share the data with you here quickly, is that this was uh, not, not bowling specific or even entertainment or restaurant specific, but just why people leave. And it interviewed folks and said, these are the three main reasons that team members leave within the first six months of a new job. So these are all jobs. Uh, number one, uh, the new employee does not like the company culture. There's that culture term again. We've talked about that uh, several times uh, throughout our profit break episodes there. So the new employee that came on board, the culture was just a mis mismatch. Second was the actual job differs from what they expected. So not only was the culture bad, you, this job wasn't what I thought it was going to be. But the real thing I want to share with you is uh, number three, and that is the company's onboarding program. That's my, you know, what do I do with my new hires? We talk about onboarding. We're talking about from the time I get hired to the time that you let me out on my own to start taking care of guests or doing whatever it is that I'm going to be doing as, as part of your team. That onboarding program was non-existent or non-effective. This is sobering. 31% of companies did not have one. And some of you, I, I, I realize you currently may not have an onboarding program, but hopefully we're going to fix that today. 31% did not have an onboarding program. 
23%, that onboarding program lasted only a day. And I can only imagine what that was like, where you filled out the paperwork, you showed me a few things on the register, you showed me a few things how to put up some stock or make a drink or, or do something, and, and then I was on my own. So 54% of people that left their job within the first six months left because of the way they were treated in the onboarding. It either didn't exist or it only lasted a day. And 30% said that it only lasted a week. Uh, my, my, my kingdom for, for an onboarding program that we could actually get to last a week. That would be incredible. So wherever you are today in your onboarding process, I want to get you to take that next step so it becomes more defined and you start using it. Uh, you know, maybe you start with a day or two days or three days or whatever that is. But just know why people are leaving because this is what the data says and I, I believe it. Uh, another important thing is as you're doing this onboarding training, does your organization have steps to service or service standards? So uh, one of the difficult things that we wrestle with is how do you train to or how do you teach someone to give good customer service or what we refer to as the guest experience? Now we have a whole series of programs and a whole series of courses and even Profit Break episodes we've devoted to this on how to develop service standards, which I'd encourage you to take a peek at. But you can see how this all rolls together and all becomes part of a, a greater solution that you have to have those service standards or steps of service in order to be able to execute them in your onboarding program. Right, so you have to have those. So start is a great one. There are several other versions versions out there, but you have to have something. If I joined your team and you were onboarding me, you know, would you tell me something other than, well, you got to give great service, and that's where that steps of service uh, come into there. I want to share with you a couple examples that that are near and dear to my heart. Uh, first of all, is Dynasty Lanes. Uh, if you're not familiar with Dynasty Lanes, it's in a small town of Willard, Ohio, about a population of 6,000. Lewis Sims is the owner and the the proprietor there. 12 lanes. Love Lewis, you know, so he's my poster, uh, poster boy, poster child. When someone says, well, Bart, I'm a small center. I don't have the resources or the times to do this. I appreciate that. And I know you're busy, but you choose not to do this. Not that you, you, you can't do it. So here is a Facebook post that I took down from uh, uh, Lewis here. And he actually built a little slideshow from some of the training that a new team member went through. And this is from, from 2018, so it's a couple years ago. Lou's been committed to this for quite some time. Congratulations to our newest staff member, Victoria. She just completed and passed the following courses. Educating our, our employees is an important part of training at Dynasty Lanes. Welcome, Vicki. And you can see there that they, it had 460 views. And here's Vicki, Victoria, that chimes back in. Thank you, Lewis. I'm happy to be part of the Dynasty Lane's Noble Roman family. And then Stacy chimed in and said, awesome girl, congrats. Imagine that, a team member that said, I'm so happy to be part of the family. She didn't say, well, it's just a job, or it's the only thing I could find, or this is what I do. Uh, this is someone that chimed back in and said, I'm, par I'm happy to be part of the family. Now, I actually reached out to Lewis before we uh, gathered this morning, and I said, Lewis, is Vicky still with you? And he said, with me? She's one of my superstars. She's absolutely with doing a fantastic job. So thank you, Vicky. Thank you, Lewis. I love it. You're, you're our uh, testimonial to small centers being a part of this, that you can embrace the onboarding program. You can do the training. It's not easy. It takes a lot of work for small centers, but it can be done. So Vicki, keep doing a great job. And then my next example uh, is entertainment based. So this comes from um, uh, Grand Station and, and they're in College uh, Station, Texas, um, in, here, in te in, in, here in Texas, of course. Um, Mike Logan is proprietor there. And this is Michaela. And I, I love Michaela as an example of a millennial young lady and, and how she embraced her job. So this is a post from Facebook where they ask a series of questions where they feature certain team members. And some of them are silly questions, fun questions. But I want to point out two, uh, two of them here to you uh, this morning. Uh, they ask, what is your favorite part of working there? Uh, the staff makes this job so wonderful. I love coming to work to see my family every day. This is a young lady, probably a millennial, I don't know personally, that says, I love coming to work every day to see my family. It's amazing. So when folks say that today's youth don't want to work or kids are lazy or there's no help, hope in the future, I, I say there are a lot of great Michaela's out there. And then the last one here is, what would you like to tell Grand Station's customers? We are so happy to have you all. You really make this job worth it to help this family come together. You help this family come together. Great job, Mike. Great job, Michaela. Actually, Gerald was just recently at this location, and he was happy to report that Michaela's there in a, in a leadership role, still working, doing a fantastic job. So uh, hats off. These are 
are, these are places that it doesn't make all their problems go away. They still have issues with, with team members and staffing, still a challenge, but I can promise you this, they are becoming the employer of choice in their community, and they have an onboarding program that sets their team members up for success, not for, for failure there. So one of the things I'd like to finish up with here uh, is this whole idea of some retention uh, best practices, and, and that is you want to reward the desired behavior. And, and what's more impactful, you know, a cash reward or a non-cash reward? And I would just tell you that the studies show that uh, while money's important, uh, you know, these intrinsic, non-intrinsic motivators, this non-cash stuff is very, very important there. It's not just about the, the money there. So a few things to wrap up with you, you, you here, Gerald, before I turn it back over to you. You want to hire for flexibility and people skills. We've got to respect availability in today's market. We've got to honor request uh, off whenever possible. And, and really what I want you to do is have a defined onboarding program. Start somewhere uh, with that program. We've got some great resources to try to help you there. And then commit to continuous training. And when you wrap all this together, when you focus on attracting and, and getting a large pool of people to uh, choose from, and then you learn how to choose the candidate based off of their attitude and not off their skill, and then when you have a defined onboarding program and, and keep those team members, it doesn't make your turnover go away. It doesn't solve everything. But what it does is it gets it to a manageable level. And, and really, Gerald, that's what we're trying to get to is getting our turnover to a manageable level. Awesome. Good stuff, Bart. Um, yeah, I mean, we all are facing the same challenges with staffing. So I know you talked about it just briefly, but I know some of the people at home are going, hold on, you really didn't dive into money. And money, to me, I'm like, hey, you're going to throw a few shekels my way. It's going to be a motivator. But is money really not a motivator nowadays? It, it, it is a fair question to ask, and it's a fair question I know all of you are thinking there. If you ask me the question, Bart, would you like a dollar an hour raise? The answer is yes. Nobody says, no, I, I don't need that. So, yes, money is important. But study after study after study shows that money is not a motivator. Uh, one of our great team members, Kelly, uses the, the term that if you're just going to try to win people with money, you're, you're just, they're just mercenary. They're, they're guns for hire. They're employees for hire. So money is important. It's a part of what we do. We have to have a sustainable uh, wage. We have to be able to make a sustainable living. But at the end of the day, you don't stay somewhere because of money. Uh, and if you do, you're just a mercenary. So the, the, the study just shows that we're motivated by a sense of belonging, a sense of teamwork, a sense of being. I mean, think about Vicky and think about Michaela. Um, I'm positive there are places they could go and make more money. And, and Mike and Lou take a great care of them and, and have a, a competitive wage. I know that. But I know they could go get money somewhere else and make more. But they're there for those other reasons. So money's important. We all would like more. But it's not the reason we stay. So good, good to know, and and definitely like Michaela, prime example down there in a college town. There's plenty of places that she could go work. So I got time for one more question. I'm gonna sneak in. So you have this whole onboarding process, but beyond the onboarding process, do you encourage continued training or education, or is it just hey, we hire some people, we give them some onboarding, and we send them out there and let them work? Well, th th that's a good point, and we certainly want to uh, want to commit to continuous training. But it starts with the onboarding. So the onboarding is critical. If you don't have that, you can't come back to someone and say, "Well, Gerald, I'm going to get you some training in six months, right?" Because you're going to you're going to leave for all those reasons we learn. So the onboarding is critical, and that's the baseline. That's the foundation. You have to have the onboarding now. As you grow, and as people like Michaela and Victoria, we have to have continuous training for them. We have to continue to challenge them. But we're now not just teaching them the basics of their job and the basics of our culture and our organization. We're helping them grow personally and professionally to better themselves and better the organization. So we want to commit to, to continuous training. It goes far beyond the onboarding, but we've got to start with the onboarding. And, we, and that's really the, the baseline to get us going. All right. Thank you, Bart. That's a lot of great information as far as we're uh, looking at this whole talent acquisition. So again, I'd like to remind you all that if you would like more information or have team members that would benefit from understanding this topic, we have a great 30-minute course as part of our on-demand online training program at bowlinguniversity.net. As we wrap up another edition of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break, remember that when your focus is on growing people, People will grow your business. We look forward to seeing you again next week at 1015 Eastern for another great episode of the Tuesday Morning Profit Break. You don't want to miss it. 
If you have any questions about today's show or would like additional information, you can always reach us at any time at education at bpaa.com. Also, you and your team can watch any of our previous episodes 24-7 by visiting bowlinguniversity.net. Until then, I'm Gerald Morrow, and do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. See you next time.